So the next talk is on Tracker, Present and Future by Carlos Garnacho. Thank you. Hi, thanks everyone for coming. So yeah, well, I'm going to talk about these last developments around Tracker. Uh, there's been uh, some work uh, around. Uh, we are heading towards, uh, well, first let's talk about the present. Oh yeah. Is that better? Can you hear me? Yeah, cool. So yeah, Tracker is na right now ramping towards 2.0. Uh, it's been quite still for uh, some time, uh, just fixes going around and whatnot. There's a few plans, uh, though, for 2.x. So. The first thing would be making it sandbox and friendly. Uh, well, the first target obviously is flat pack. Uh, and uh, yeah, well, the thing is that Tracker, uh, it started at something very different and it has been evolving into something else. Uh, so it started, uh, well, uh, it's been staying for quite some time as a diva service uh, where you could make queries and it would return and then other DBAS services would be able to, to insert information that you could look for and whatnot. But this didn't turn out to be really sandboxing friendly when Flatpak came around. Uh, yeah, the, the only way to, to, to have this happen to clients uh, was uh, just plugging the hole so you could talk with the, with the system, uh, well, the session service, uh, the DBAS service, uh, so uh, the actual data lived outside the sandbox and uh, there was no actual split between reading and, and writing points. So, so uh, plugging the hole uh, would just make all available to, to the sandbox client. So, and of course, it's not okay to, to have it uh, write data outside the sandbox. So. Uh, there's also, well, there, there are plans to, to make this happen, to actually split uh, the tracker and, uh, and make uh, the, the database uh, useful by itself and having the miners being a, a standalone entity uh, that could be reusable as well and whatnot. But uh, the, the idea is that uh, tracker's database is basically an RDF store. It can be queried using SparkQL, everything uh, RW3C standards, and uh, why having it uh, together with another pieces of software that people might not want to use or people might not find useful or whatever. So, uh, yeah, uh, the, the goal, the main goal is uh, obviously make everything more reusable independently. So applications can, for example, use the tracker database without miners or uh, have being able to use the miners in a different way than they are being used currently. <coughs> and there's also been some accidental improvements. Uh, yeah, well, tracker has a long tradition of being blamed for slowness and, and whatnot. And yeah, well, I, I had a look uh, at perf uh, output, uh, and it turned out that most of the time was being spent o on the main loop. So just uh, merging uh, the the processing the inside the the miners could actually speed it up quite a bit, at up to four times the the actual speed. So yeah. Uh, things uh, there's uh, always rooms for uh, room for improvement and it's it's a lot better now and another thing that was noticed is that uh, well I n this is not news I guess but I notify is really bad at performance and uh, having too many I notify handles uh, in order to receive notifications about changes in directories and whatnot uh, adds an overhead to every system call that is being performed o on the file system. So actually, 
being able to, to delay that, uh, this is only done if the, if the number of uh, folders to index is uh, vastly larger than, than the amount of uh, available iNotify handles. Tracker will now just add those at the end and do all the indexing as fast as possible. And, and it's, again, a, a quite, quite an improvement uh, over the indexing speed. If you have a, a large file system with too many directories and whatnot, uh, you, you will notice that. So yeah, the, there's, as I told, uh, the tracker had a way to do things that, uh, well, uh, it can't change of a sudden uh, and, uh, and have applications still work uh, flawlessly and whatnot. So there's basically two approaches to sandboxing. This is a, a, an evolutionary approach where uh, the applications in the sandbox would basically spawn their own set of demons uh, within the sandbox. And they would be writing stuff within the sandbox, and they would be reading stuff that has been made available inside the sandbox. So this could be an example uh, of uh, this is a, a, a domain ontology rule, which it would be dropped by the application uh, on, on a certain directory. The, the idea is that, is that Tracker is part of the platform in, in Flatpak. So the application can make use of Tracker in, in the platform. And uh, it could drop one such file where it basically defines the, the, the location for, for the database, the location for the journal. The, the journal is, uh, well, uh, a secondary store uh, in case the database uh, it gets broken and whatnot. You can basically replicate all the information that you've been dumping in the, in the database. And you can rebuild the information out of there. You, you could say the, the ontology name. Uh, that's basically Nepomuk. Uh, Tracker has been fixed to Nepomuk. Uh, for quite some time already. Or you can actually define your own ontology and, and have it point uh, by a file location. And well, writing ontologies uh, is not that hard, actually. Uh, people, yeah, uh, has been touching Nepomuk with a 10-foot pole. But uh, if you get to do one, it's not that hard to, to wrap your mind around it. And uh, this could be the, the domain that could be the, the actual application name of the, of the application uh, in the bus. So uh, the, the tracker demons can be made to belong into this same namespace and can be part of the inside the sandbox of, of the same application. It could play as part of the application, actually. And you can also define the, 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 the miners that are useful to you. Uh, might, might be all, might be none, but it, yeah, well, it's up to the application, basically. And this is the single uh, line of code that would be need to be added in the application to, in order to make it use of that domain ontology. It's basically defining the domain for, for all tracker uh, and objects and whatnot. So they will be smart enough already to look into this uh, domain ontology file, and they will be know the locations and whatnot. And this is, uh, yeah, this is about the only change that uh, uh, an application using Tracker today would need to do in order to work inside, uh, inside Flatpak. But there's, of course, a, a more revolutionary approach in which uh, the applications can tr create uh, RDF stores of their own. They can define the ontology. They can insert whatever they want. They, they can make use of Tracker, but uh, they wouldn't spawn any Tracker daemon, uh, not anything. 
it will happen everything inside the application. This, for example, is being used, uh, well, uh, there's work in progress for Polari in order so they can replace High Florian. <laughs> Uh, in order uh, to replace telepathy logger and uh, yeah and it, it, the, the plan is that tracker can be useful by itself uh, as an RDF store and they are using it this way which is really neat and this would be the entry point for the all the things uh, you could create a, a new local connection you can create as many as you want you can create several tracker databases uh, in, in which you, you are responsible of the data of the ontology and whatnot you can use whatever you want um yeah <laughs> I think I've been talking about this <laughs> already. Yeah, true. The second point is important because uh, th th there was this uh, library, this lift tracker minor library, which was basically useful for implementing miners as known to trackers so far, which was basically a Divas daemon that will connect uh, through Divas to the to the main store, and they would it would send the updates via Divas and whatnot. Uh, but Lift Tracker Miner has been made partially useful for the client side, so you don't need to spawn any additional Divas daemons. You could be spawning uh, a, a Tracker Miner FS object inside a separate thread with a, an, a standalone main loop and have a, all indexing happen I in a thread in your application. In case you need it, for for example, Polari is not the case. So the far future, I hope not that far, but <laughs> but yeah, well, uh, as time as allows, uh, things will be eventually happen. One thing uh, that will be really neat to have is full uh, Sparkle 1.1 support. Uh, this. This standard uh, already was made stable uh, like five years ago or something like that, but there's portions of it that Tracker doesn't handle yet. And there's very useful things uh, for queries like property paths and whatnot uh, that could simplify quite a lot the querying stuff. Uh, yeah, but it will be tricky. <laughs> Because uh, yeah, the, the, the parsers, the Sparkle parsers implemented in Tracker, they are pretty fixated uh, on the Sparkle 1.0 uh, spec. Uh, so, so yeah, quite a few changes will be necessary in order to make it cutter for for Sparkle 1.1. Another great thing to have would be having support for parametric arguments. Uh, right now, in order to compose the query, uh, the applications are just concatenating strings and whatnot, and we know this is not safe. Uh, the, there's room for, uh, well, this is a Spark Global, but uh, just like there are SQL, uh, uh, SQL uh, attacks where you can uh, uh, append to, to the end of a query and whatnot, you could be doing the very same with Sparkle in case if an application is building the, the query in a wrong way or inserting user, uh, the result from an entry, for example, directly into the string, uh, that could get really wrong. So the idea is to have support for these arguments so you can say, yeah, this field uh, goes with this string and then uh, the the proper escaping will happen inside inside tracker and yeah this was really fast <laughs> so yeah is there any questions <laughs> thanks When do you hope to release Tracker 2.0, uh, It's scheduled to be released with uh, 3.26. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, it's embarrassing. Come on. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So, lunch time. <laughs> yeah, shortly, right? <laughs> Thanks, anyway, everyone, for coming.